What's up everybody, it's Dave at DraftBit and we've got a new feature to show you that lets you customize your bottom tabs for a tab navigator. Um, so you've probably seen tab navigators before in different apps where you can click through different screens from down here, this tab bar. And if I switch over to the navigate mode and select the tab navigator, you can see here in the configs tab, I've got my tabs here, tab one, tab two, tab three, corresponding to these three different routes. And I can set my screen and give it a label if I want. By default, it uses the screen's name, but you can give it a different label here. And we can select from all these different icon packs to customize how it looks. And then, in addition to that, we can set a font here and we can change the background color and the active tab and inactive tab colors, different stuff like that. But sometimes you might want to further customize the tab navigator, add additional buttons, maybe put a floating audio player on top. And to do that, we can now come down, if we scroll down further on the configs tab for the tab navigator, you can see we have a new section here, tab bar block. And here I can select an existing block or I can create a new block. In this case, I don't have one yet. So I'm gonna type in a new nav or a new name for this nav. And once I select that, it'll take me to the new block. And by default, it just starts out as a plain view but you can just like a screen in DraftBit, um, if you're not familiar with blocks, you can use all the same components inside your blocks. And so once you assign a block as a tab navigator block, it will then have access to all those routes that you configured for your different tabs when we were back here in the tab nav config. So these tabs right here, in this case, I've got three, obviously we can add more, we can nest more uh, screens under here if we wanted to, but the block gets access to all these in the form of an, an array of routes. So if I switch back here to my block, I can show you how that works. And I'm going to first add a list. And the list component just basically lets us iterate over an array of data, and then it will create an instance of whatever you nest inside of it however many times there are for like each item in, in the array that gets passed to it so in this case our routes array is going to have three objects one for each of those screens that we have and selecting my list here i can go to the data tab and click down here and i can access all the routes right here under the property section so once I do that, now it has access to those routes. And I'm gonna start by putting a view inside here. And a view is just a simple layout container that has different layout props, some style props, and it's usually used to just arrange different components inside of it. So I'm gonna select that. And then I'm going to get an icon, put that inside and a text component, put that inside under the icon. And you can see now here we have three different instances, one for each of those objects that's inside that routes array, representing our different routes that are associated with the screen. And if I click on, actually first let's go to our list and we can style this a little bit better. We can switch it to row and that will put them all horizontally instead of vertically. And then for our view, of each one of these. I want to go ahead and align center and justify center. So that will get these all lined up nice. And then let's do one more thing on this list. I want to go ahead and justify them with space around so that will kind of evenly space them out. Okay, now, so remember each one of these, everything that you put inside of it is going to have access to the instance of the object from the array that you pass into the data, just like when you're using this with a fetch component or whatever. So in our case, 
we have access to those routes. And if I select my icon, I can come here to the data tab. And instead of selecting an icon here, like we might normally do, we're going to select a custom icon. And in this case, we're going to use our list item icon. So this list, I or this list item represents each of those different routes and they've got different properties. So we have the index of the route, the name, which is basically the screen name. We have the label, which is whatever we assigned as that label, or if it's empty, it will use the screen name and then the icon. So in this case, we want to select that icon. Okay, so we've seen that's updated. And in this preview mode, it's not going to actually show you the ones that you've selected. But once you switch over to the screen, you will see those update. And then so we're going to do the same thing here with our text. And in this case, we want to put the label. So I'll select the label for the list item. And you can see that updates here now. Let's go back and take a look now. If we go to our home and there you can see now each one of these is basically set up like they were before and so what I'm gonna do is now you can see nothing's actually going on so if we click on to the tab back to the tab bar block we want to actually make these interactable so I'm gonna grab a pressable I can just drag my view down into that pressable. And now the pressable has interaction triggers that you can set up, one of them being on press. So if I click on the on press and I add a navigate action, I can now select a custom destination. And then for route name, I can grab the list items route name. And so that will make sure that whenever we click on any of these, it will actually navigate us to the right screen. So you can see now it takes me to articles, feed and home. And then the next thing that we're missing is there's no indication of which one is selected. So if we go back to our blocks, I can update the styling on these. And if I go to like my icon here, I've got some component specific styling here, including the color. So, but instead of selecting an actual color here, what I'm going to do is use a dynamic value by clicking on the label and I can choose something like if then else, which will allow us to evaluate a condition. And I can say if the current navigation route name, is equal to the item name. So I've got my list item, check that name. If they're, they're the same, that means that we're on that screen. And so in that case, I want to use my primary color. And if we're not, then I can just use a nice light gray. And you can see here, these have all updated. This one's purple showing you it's active and these are the deactive ones, inactive ones. Okay, so we can do the same thing for our text as well. And I can choose my color, go down here to if then else, check if the current route name is equal to the list item route name and again, if it is, if it's true, I want to use my primary color. And if it's false, use that same light gray. And here we go. You can see now these have all updated. So let's switch back to a screen and we can test it out. All right, now you see here purple and these are grayed out when they're not active. Cool. All right, so beyond that, you can customize it any way you want. So we basically just replicated the default behavior, but you can do anything else you wanted to do here. Add a special other button. You could maybe have um, like one big button here in the middle and some smaller ones on the side if you wanted to restyle them that way. 
you can come to this view and we could add like a little bit of extra padding on the top and the bottom if we wanted to. We could change the background color. Something like divider. Yeah, do divider. So you can see now we can switch back. And here we've got a little bit extra padding here on the top and the bottom, and we've got our light gray color. And then we can add even more components if we wanted to. If we wanted to have a audio player, we could stick an audio player up here at the top, and now we would have a sticky audio player. So basically, this lets you have complete control over how this works and what how it looks. And in this case, like with this audio player. Hey everyone, this is Nick with DraftBit. Today, I'm excited to show you around what we've built. As a reminder. You can see it continues playing even if we switch screens, which is really nice if you're doing something like an audio player here or you want anything to be persistent uh, on top or on uh, below or to the right or wherever. So anyway, that's a quick look at the new tab bar block feature and we hope you enjoy it.